Promote your brand here at Viral Hip Hop News. Email me, Sam Ant at thehiphopnews.com. No, wait, let's go. I think that it was more so, you know, the execs that pushed this agenda? Or do you think it was a mixture of the artists as well, you know, um, rapping that way? Because obviously, you know, they're rapping about this stuff, but this stuff is going on in the communities. Do you think the execs pushed this and changed the course of hip-hop, in your opinion? Yes. Mm. See, this is the this was an ancient, brother, oh, God, this is, was an old statement that was a mantra among slave masters when we were on the plantation uh, in 1555 all the way through 1865 and beyond. Listen to this mantra that slave masters had. Nigga sing, nigga dance, nigga jump, or nigga die. In other words, sing for me, dance for me, jump, play a sport for me. And if you're not going to be singing or, or dancing or playing a sport for me, the only thing I want you to become good at is being dead or dealing death. And when you look at the world today, you find that the only fields of human endeavor that black people are allowed to express their black excellence in without hindrance and suppression is in the world of sport, play, and entertainment. Other than that, we deal in death. So, so what happens to a young mind that sees that the only people that have the great wealth, the great success, the great fortune, the great fame are coming up in these three areas, dancing, singing, sport, or deal in death. Guess what they do? They take the genetic power that their greatness that is built in their dna and they channel it toward the areas that they know that they will be allowed to be successful in without hindrance and suppression by the gatekeepers or in this case the executives of the music industry so so you might have you might have a artist that shows up but there's a hundred other artists that's just as good as the one that shows up but who does the executive pick? They don't pick the conscious version of, they don't pick, pick the revolutionary artist. They don't pick the one that has social commentary that will reshape the way people think. They pick the one that is going to promote the disrespect, degradation, and destruction of black people. Mm -hmm. And they say, here, let's you come in, we'll give you the deal and put millions behind you and make you popular. So, so reality is this, music or the artists that are rapping, they are reflecting and representing what goes on in the hood. But hell, I don't need you to use your gift, skill, or talent and your poetic wordplay to show me all the negatives that I've been looking at all my whole life. Now, when you get a gift like that from God, there's no school you can go to to learn how to to put wordplay together like Lil Wayne or Drake or Jay Z. You can't. There that, that ain't no school that can teach you that. God gave them that, and He didn't give them this skill set for them to reflect reality. He gave them the skill set that they can use that power to change the reality that we live in. So, in that sense, yes. There is a thousand. I don't want to put a name out there because I don't want to mm -hmm. belittle my brothers. Right. But whoever's the best artist that is the negative artist that's at the top of the game right now, there's another thousand of them just like him. But some of them have commentary that would resurrect and redeem our people. They don't give them the deals. They only give the one the deal that's going to promote the foolishness. D mm -hmm. Did you know? Uh, brother, oh God, that Tupac, whenever they did the song uh, uh, Two of America's Most Wanted, mm -hmm. that in the commentary at the end, he Tupac said he made a statement. He said, after we get finished with these black bees, we can go after these Jewish hoes. Mm -hmm. Do you know they made him edit that out? Wow. Not surprised. They told him, you can say black bees, but you can't say Jewish hoes. When Michael Jackson made the song, they don't really care about us. He said, sue me, Jew me, you will never do me. They made, they've made him, made Sony recall millions of albums to take the word Jew out. 
Look at Kanye West's old song. He said, uh, I can't remember the exact words. He mm -hmm. said something about uh, dope drug dealers buy Jordans and crack heads by crack. Mm -hmm. And the white man's getting yeah. paid off of all of that. Listen to the radio version. And the word white man is deleted. It's edited out. Wow. So what, what is it that you can't say negative Jew? You can't say nothing negative about white people. But every song we can make can whoop a nigga, kill a nigga. We, we, we can always degrade ourselves, but we can't degrade no other nationality of people. Who set up? And who controls that narrative? Think of that for a second. So, so this this is an industry uh, that is controlled by gatekeepers that mm -hmm. do not care for the good of the rise of us as a people. They want us to continue to use the gift, skill, and talent that God gave us to reinforce nigger culture and nigger life. Because a nigga, a, 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 a black man or a woman functioning like that is a non-threatening entity to white supremacy and a power structure that exists. You know, Kanye West is a good conversation piece right now to kind of go to because we see, I mean, we've seen him throughout the years, but just recently, Kanye West as a whole, and he hasn't made everybody upset in our culture, but he's made black people upset. He's made white people upset. And just recently, he said some things that people deem to be anti-Semitic. Now, we've had numerous conversations about that conversation on this platform, and we see a lot of people upset about the anti-Semitic or the, the anti-Semitic he's been, quote unquote, spewing. But we ask ourselves, what exactly did he say to deem it anti-Semitic? So can you just break down the, the term anti-Semitic and why when it comes to when we as a people just have opposition toward the powers that be and most of the time that happens to be people from the jewish community why they seem so hell-bent on not only calling us anti-semitics but just not even having a conversation around yeah hey, these brothers seem to be claiming that they are the true children of jerusalem the true jewish people they never want to have that conversation can you kind of that's right expound on that well it is a simple view of the dictionary of the word semite and it speaks of a Semite being one of an Afro or African mm -hmm. origin or of the Arab population. So in that context, we are the real Semites. So to be anti-Semitic means to be anti-yourself. The, the thing that, that, that happens is they use this term as a way of, of muzzling and shutting people and putting you really into a social prison by which you will never have a platform to express yourself. Do you know that Oprah Winfrey has been called anti-Semitic? Mm -hmm. Did you know that Martin Luther King was labeled anti-Semitic? Frederick Douglass was labeled anti-Semitic? Desmond Tutu was named anti-Semite? Mandela was labeled an anti-Semite? Go the, look up the names. If, if the list is so long, anybody that's ever stood up, Marcus Garvey was labeled anti-Semitic. So most of the times when it comes to black people, anybody that does or tries to promote something good for us as a people, they find a way to twist it and make it against them. It's, it's, it's a magic trick uh, that they're performing. One of the things that should be looked at is when when Kanye West made the statement and he said, I think that I'm going DEFCON 3 or something. So look up what DEFCON 3 stands for. Yes, sir. It is a military maneuver wherein you are putting yourself in a position not of offensive against something, but in defensive and being prepared for whatever they've got coming for you. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot that needs to be studied. And, and I think that that there should be some measure of of weight put on one of the latest interviews that our brother made where he talked about the drugs that they were giving him they he said that the drugs that they were giving him and the drugs that they give in the form of a psychoanalyst one as soon as they consider you to be bipolar schizophrenic or have any mental illness the first thing they want to do is drug you 
he said that he believes that they were given he, the drug they gave him and are given to us is designed to murder the creativity that exists in the mind. The drug that they gave him caused him to blow up and become overweight in a matter of weeks, he said. Which means, in his words, that they were trying to kill me. So there, there's a lot that needs to be looked into deeper than the effects we see from Kanye West. I think there needs to be a deeper analyst of some of the things that might be causing what people condemn as an effect. And instead of attacking the effect, let's, let's attack uh, the causes. Of course, you've seen him in the shirt, White Lives Matter, and everybody went crazy all over that. And the real truth is that, of course, we are sensitive to hear such a statement or see such a statement on the back of a shirt of a black man or a white man because it has been a rebuttal statement for Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And the reason we, in 2015, came up with the slogan that Black Lives Matter is because the way we were treated by the police, prosecutors, judges, and society in general, we were treated as if y'all don't think our lives matter. There are no white Trayvon Martins. There are no white Tamir Rices or white Sandra Blands. There are no white Freddie Grays. We are the only ones there. There are no black police vigilantes going out killing white teenagers in white communities, but you have white ones doing that to us. So we said black lives matter because the world obviously didn't see that. White lives matter. Is what he had. Is it true? Yes. All lives do, in fact, matter because all life comes from one source, God himself. And anything that is in existence is by the permissive will or the active will of God himself. So anything that exists does matter. But we are hurt and offended as a people because we see him saying that at a time when we're trying to make it clear that we are faced with uh, in injustice. But white life mattered to God for him to bring it into existence. Black life matters to God for us to bring it in, him to bring it into existence. So technically, the slogan, the shirt is not a false statement. It's just the connotation or the commonly accepted definition of most people that say white lives matter. They're saying it as a response rebuttal to black lives matter. And most of the time, it's coming from the mind of a, a racist white person that wants to do some harm to black people. Truth is though, all life does in fact matter and we are headed toward a world whenever there will be no tyranny, oppression, no injustice, no wickedness that exists anymore and we won't have to wear any shirts or slogans because all life will matter that exists to those that are allowed to survive this great, great calamity that's coming on this world. When the new world begins, all life will matter and there won't be an argument anymore.